one of you. Jenny, uh, over the last 23 years, Jenny Williams has helped thousands of real estate agents across the country make sense of the real estate industry and put marketing plans in place to produce six-figure incomes and beyond. As CEO of Get a, Real, uh, Get a Real Estate Life Marketing and Training Services, Jenny has personally coached many of the top producers in Birmingham, Alabama area, and her book, Build a Six-Figure Real Estate Business, has helped both rookie and veteran agents achieve consistent success. In 2019, Jenny went back into full-time sales for the first time in over a decade, producing over $10 million and becoming the number two agent with her company, EXP Realty in the state of Alabama. This effort earned Jenny the coveted Icon Agent Award at EXP Realty. She accomplished this feat by using the same foundational principles she will be teaching today. So sit back, strap in, and get ready to take notes. Jenny, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate you, and uh, we'll turn the time over to you. Thank you. Hey, so happy to be here. And uh, everybody, I'm grateful that you tuned in. Um, I talk fast. I might be from the South, but um, I'm a fast talker. And um, my whole thing is meat and potatoes. If I take your time, you better leave with a whole bunch of stuff that you can implement and make a difference in your business immediately. So definitely take notes. Um, we do have slides. And I'm also going to give you some uh, different web addresses to go to. To, to make sure that you've got really good materials and that you leave here with a ton of meat. Um, like uh, he said, um, uh, I'm so excited for him to have his one year anniversary because this uh, company is life changing. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. I'm not even on my second uh, year yet. And uh, it has been amazing for me. Um, I hit the icon award and I uh, was scared to death y'all to go back into sales because I've been helping other people's businesses uh, and telling them how to run their business and creating strategies for them. What if I couldn't do it myself again to start back over? So, um, I had a lot of fear when I jumped back in sales back in January. And uh, now I can say, okay, got my confidence back in sales because I just followed what I have um, taught everyone else. And I'm going to give you those basics here today. Um, everyone who joins uh, gets their license and comes into real estate. And I know this because uh, I used to be a team leader um, at a company and, uh, you know, I recruited a hundred and, 30 some odd agents in less than three years. And every single person says the minimum is six figures. Um, you don't want to get a license if you don't make at least that. So let's talk about, you know, how do we do that? Where do we even start? It's so overwhelming. You get so many phone calls like buy this, do this. Um, you know, you have to have this and you know, you're going to be out of money in no time and haven't had a sale. So um, let's, you know, go on to, to really figure out um, what, what's it going to take. So I like to go down to the bare minimum at $150,000 um, commission. Um, and y'all, for many years, I sold uh, $70,000 average uh, uh, houses and I sold over 60 houses a year doing that. That will wear you out. <laughs> so here's one tip for you start at a higher price range because once you get used to a lower price range, it's hard for your mindset and mentality to say that you're worth working in um, a higher market. So if you can step out into that higher market first, um, but also put reality on here, you're going to, if you do at least 30 sides, transactions or 30 families helped, then that's going to get you to that 150, I mean, at $150,000, that's going to get you to um, a net of um, $100,000 because that's going to allow you to pay your cap and have some marketing expenses as well. And we always like to go off net figures because this business can be expensive and you can outspend your income very quickly. So um, once you know this, okay, that the goal is I've got to do at least 30, then Put that everywhere. You need um, uh, that in front of you on a whiteboard you, in visuals. Um, you need it. Put it on your phone cover. You know, I my mission is to help 30 people this year, you know, 30 families. Put it on post-it notes on the rear view mirror of your car. Um, uh, 
put it everywhere so that you can be reminded of what that mission is. Because when you see it constantly, um, then you're going to know what it is that you need to do. And that driving motivational force actually will help bring people to you. Um, Brian Tracy says, write this down 10 times a day on an index card. And guess what? After 23 years, I still do that every day. I write down, I am an icon. <laughs> this is how many people I'm going to help this year year because it's so important everything in this business starts with what's up here and uh, I know you're, you've heard that from a ton of people but I can tell you it is the truth so you've got to be feeding your mind with some really good stuff and know first that 30 transactions your first year is possible I've seen so many people do it and six figures your first year is absolutely possible so um, now that we've got that out of the way, we know how to keep that in front of us, keep um, being motivated uh, with that. Let me tell you some of the drawbacks, okay? You're going to get discouraged. You're going to want to quit. Whenever I first joined, my dad is a real estate broker. And of course, growing up, I was like, I will never do that job. <laughs> because he would, he's so, you know, old school. He would leave in the middle of um, dinner and uh, not be back till w way late. Um, he'd sell our house because I have one more house to sell you. So we moved like 11 times in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I was never, ever going to do that job. And uh, <laughs> one, uh, when I finally decided I was going to do it, um, one of my dad's friends came to see me and he said, look, uh, you're going to want to quit at least 11 times. And the reason not 12 is because you're excited that first month because you think that you're going to be able to do so well and it's going to be so easy. And uh, then after your first month in, you're going to probably get upset, say you're quitting, probably shed some tears and say, forget it. This is too hard. I'm going to do something else. Check that off your list. Okay. Check those off. <laughs> That's the third time I wanted to quit. That's the fourth time I wanted to quit. Um, there is a saying that I've always said in this business, and he who hangs on the longest last, um, just like this on a branch, <laughs> because um, it takes a lot of thick skin, even right now. I mean, our buyers and sellers are extremely emotional and uh, way more so than um, they were last year. And, uh, you know, me personally, um, with people backing out and being anxious and multiple offers, um, we're having to sell things two and three times. It can be discouraging. I want you to look past all that and let your goals uh, push you through that and say, hey, you know, I'm on the, I'm, I'm, I'm headed somewhere and uh, I'm on this countdown to hit this goal so that it's stronger than all the things that are going to be thrown at you. All right, so let's keep going. <clears throat> all right, we talked about um, all your, your whiteboards and post-it notes. You've got that down. All right, so now you got to figure out who do you want to serve, okay? You know how many people you need to serve. Who do you want to serve? And when, when you're new, a lot of times you're like, I'll go anywhere. I'll help anybody. I don't care what markets it is. And I, I, want, I want to challenge you actually to be extremely specific on this. Um, some people are very heart led. They're like, I only want to help credit repair people, or I only want to help people get off Section 8, or um, uh, you know what? If I could just um, uh, uh, work luxury and only have my sign in luxury, I want you to be very specific because again this is going to narrow your focus when you're brand new you usually have no focus you're all over the place and you can be overwhelmed every single day and that will stall your progress so when you are specific and I'll tell you like mine is I only want to serve that doesn't mean this is the only business I will take or agree to but my goal is, and my target market is, I only want to serve home sellers um, in uh, uh, certain areas of my city, certain neighborhoods, um, at a minimum of $300,000 price range. Okay, so now I'm very clear. I know that when a lead comes in that doesn't match that, I can say, do I really want it? Does it match mine? Do I need it right now? Um, I've capped and I'm on my way back to ICON. I might take something that doesn't fit that mold right now so that I can get that um, icon award. 
Um, so we, we have our reasons, but when you're specific about who you want to serve, then those people are going to show up in your life. Um, other people will know it. You can start becoming the expert in that, um, uh, whatever it is. If it's only home buyers, um, I, I can share this with you. I, I did the same thing too when I was new. I felt like I could only work with home buyers because I didn't know enough to take listings or I wasn't experienced enough or I didn't have anything to offer for listings. Let, let me just encourage you um, to have the confidence to put listings first on your agenda because again, once you get in habits and you're two, three years down the road, you, you start building such a fear for change in your business um, and you're probably frustrated um, I was in, I was, uh, selling over 60 houses a year when I was new and most of them were buyers and I was slap worn out, um, with sellers, you can just leverage your time. Um, and everything you need to know is in your MLS system, all the data, everything you need to know. If you're an EXP agent, you can do your presentations in uh, the marketing center. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, but you can have everything you need to walk in confidently um, through your MLS system, um, knowing your market. So uh, I challenge you to put that on your list to say, no, I'm going to be a fantastic listing agent in this neighborhood, this area, this zip code, this city, et cetera, so that you can um, really start building your confidence and your marketing around there. Plus, okay, once you know who you want to serve, then you can choose who your leads, what lead sources you need to use because you're going to need at least three lead sources. Don't get any more than three if you're brand new, okay? Stick with three. What's the first one going to always be? You're going to hear it over and over every single class you go to, and this is the one thing that nobody ever does. <laughs> Even though the main thing you hear over and over and over and over, and it's funny, you'll get into year five and go, oh my God, I really should have listened. <laughs> so let's save those years of struggle, right? Let's get it right down first. The number one, the first lead source you're going to need is a sphere of influence. And in order to have 30 closings um, per year and to hit that six-figure goal, you're going to need 150 people in your sphere of influence. Um, and you're going to need their name, their address, their cell number, their email. You're going to need all this information because if communicated effectively, and just think about how much you have to communicate being brand new that first year. They have to know who you are and how, what you offer. And they, they have to feel a trust, sense of trust to you in order to feel comfortable referring you. Um, and that makes perfect sense. So how do you do that? You browbeat people with positive messages. And uh, <laughs> we're, we're gonna talk more about that, but no, 150 people in your sphere of influence. So how do you find all of this? Okay, Michael Mayer, who wrote um, Seven Levels of Communication, is a fantastic book. Put it on your list. It is a must read and you will love to read this. It's not a dry business book. It's a story. It's a story of um, a struggling agent who um, turned his business around on referrals. Um, most of my business comes from referrals and, uh, and I have different lead sources, but most of my business comes from referrals because the, that's going to be your, your sure business. Um, the people who trust you and have confidence in you. Um, so I prefer answering the phone than I do making those calls, but you're going to have to do both on your first year and maybe your first two years. So hang on just a second. All right, once I get going, <laughs> is everybody learning stuff? Are we good? Okay, I know people are muted, but. Um, yes. Okay, good, 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 Carolyn. Um, so, all right, now that you've got your sphere of influence and you know it's 150 people and you can't just do one announcement and nothing else. Okay, now the very first sale I ever got was I did an, a, um, a postcard, um, black and white postcard out to all of my sphere of influence and I used, uh, I was 25 years old, okay, so I could still use my parents' um, friends um, and uh, 
just talked about how, hey, I just got in the business. I'm super excited. I was in casino marketing and, um, uh, you know, I learned how to fill the casino with people and I'm going to be able to learn how to fill people in your houses. Well, one of my mom's best friends from high school said, um, uh, my dad's house uh, is vacant. He passed away and I want to be your very first sale. So the next step, step here is don't be afraid to tell people that you're brand new. Don't be afraid because people love that enthusiasm. They're going to hire enthusiasm over expertise all day long. Nobody likes to know it all and everybody loves good energy. So um, you can be enthusiastic um, and exciting and know very little and people are still going to want to do business with you. So say, hey, who wants to be my first person? Put that out on social media. Um, I'm here to help. I've got all the time in the world and you know, 100% of my energy is going to be just for you and getting this household. Um, so I want to make sure that you understand that you don't have to cover it up. You don't have to feel embarrassed that you're new um, because people will probably choose you just for that reason. Or you might lose some business because of it. Yes, you probably could, but who cares? You're just on to the next one, right? So um, depending on what uh, your target is, like we talked about, then you can choose your other two lead sources to start with. If you need business today and money today in your pocket, then you better get some first time home buyers. Okay. Um, I don't want you to get into the habit of totally focusing on that um, and not focusing on the listings, but we're in reality. And uh, if you're anxious about putting money because maybe you walked away from a job or maybe you're trying to quit a full-time job and transition into real estate full-time, then, I mean, money's an issue. Money is going to be an issue. Let's not pretend that it's not. Um, we could say we love people all day long, but we can love people and be broke and have to find something else to do. <laughs> so um, I like what Brent goes said is that what Paul was a tent maker for a reason. <laughs> so, um, uh, your other lead sources, um, if you want sellers, then um, some of your best lead sources, of course, are going to be your referrals. We already had that. Um, your second one is going to be direct mail. And yes, it does still work. Um, some of these programs like um, bold leads or offers or things like that, that promise a lot of seller leads, I, save your money. Okay, they're expensive. You don't need to spend money on stuff like that yet. Direct mail is expensive, but it actually works better than those programs. It's just going to take longer to do that. It takes at least eight times for people to uh, connect you with real estate before they even start remembering you. Um, so if you're sending out um, postcards and you're sending out um, direct mail uh, for eight months, like once a month, you're not going to see any return on that for eight months minimum. So what if you speed it up and you spend all that money on the front end and you do it for eight weeks? Plus, you can get vendor partners to partner with you to cut down some of that cost. That is an excellent way to go after sellers. Um, okay, the other way to go after sellers is just face-to-face -face meeting small business people and expanding that network because once you meet the people in the community that are running the community, you have large sphere of influences themselves. Um, like if you go into a hair salon, the lady there is going to know everybody in, around a few blocks, right? You need to take care of her, bring her breakfast, love on her, make sure she knows you're in real estate. Um, visit small businesses as much as you can and take something with you um, so that uh, you're building a reputation. Do videos with them. Um, show them uh, that, you know, you're an expert and highlight them so you are always giving and promoting your community to them. Great way to stand out. That's a great way to start attracting listings. Um, okay, I've got a whole list of seller lead sources and a whole list of buyer lead sources. Um, uh, I've got some that cost no money and some that cost a ton of money. Your job is to say, okay, who do I want to serve? And how am I going to reach them? Which ones do I need to implement into my business? So um, that way you can start getting a plan and uh, go on to the next step. Okay, so here are some here that Zach put together for me. And Zach is my marketing manager. Um, sphere of influence, social media, uh, for sale by owners and expireds. Um, find your own way with these things. All the business that I've got six closings this month and uh, um, 
The one of them is an expired that I called last year, sold one of his houses last year, uh, just sold one of his houses this year, and he's buying another one. So two of those this month came from him, me just calling expireds last year. And guess what? After him, I never called another one because why do we do that? When we find what works, we usually stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, it really does work if you can get through the expires and build a relationship there. And um, so it's, it's like sellers saying, Hey, um, I'm devastated because it didn't work and I still need to sell my house. Very good leads. Um, yes, a ton of people are going after them, but it's a great way for you to also um, get at least the experience of having the conversations and uh, getting in front of these people as well. So, all right, um, now what uh, we wanna do is say, how are we going to translate those lead sources into the most important thing in all of hitting six figures? And that is going to be the completed number of new client appointments per week. This is the most important thing, period, um, uh, of your business. Completed new client appointments per week. If you are fantastic at um, converting leads, then um, you only need to do three per week. And you don't need to win all three. You just need to have three new client appointments per week. Let's define what that means, okay? Um, and again, I know that I talk fast and I don't breathe much, so. <laughs> I'm gonna let you take it all in for a second. All right, a new client appointment is not a Zillow lead that asks you to meet at a new house, okay? And that is a prospect, but that is not a client appointment. That is, um, and I have a term that, you know, those kind of leads see us as tour guides with keys and uh, with zero value. We are in necessary inconvenience in their world. Those kind of leads feel uh, um, uh, uh, like that about us until they can see our value. And the only way people can see our value and know what we do is having a presentation done, a consultation. So it's gonna be a buyer presentation. After you share, let's say that's a Zillow lead, you meet somebody at a house and you decide to go um, and you tell them up front that we're gonna see this house and then have a conversation consultation or you do it backwards. We're going to have a consultation and then see the house. That is a new client appointment. After that consultation is completed, you can check that off one for the week. Okay. And again, you don't have to get anything signed. You don't have to win the business. You just have to go on that many. Why? Because all the numbers will add up in your favor. And uh, this also, if you go for four per week, will also not only hit your six figures, but you can take four weeks off per year because you probably got your license so that you could have a little bit of flexibility. And then you discover there is none in real estate and that's a whole nother class. <laughs> uh, so uh, when you go and hit, you know, that's your main goal. What's your job description? complete four new client appointments per week. That's all I have to do, baby. Ha ha. Your daily activities every single day is uh, going to be whatever it takes to get you an appointment. And uh, that's your job description. Um, a listing appointment is a new client appointment. Now, here's, here's a great question. Well, I just went on two new client appointments because that seller is also going to buy from me. You can't count that yet. And more than likely, you probably didn't do two different presentations anyway. So, um, and the reason I don't want you to count that in your figures yet is because I want you to win. I want you to win. I don't want you to have shortcuts. I don't want you to be devastated at the end of the year and say, well, I did four, okay? No, I want you to be in total reality and not kid yourself here. If you are at the listing appointment and you get the listing sign and they say, yes, they're going to buy something, um, they can't buy until they sell, probably. So count that after they have a contract on there and you still have to get your buyer agency agreement signed with them as well. Too many times you're going to get your heart broken because they thought you were only going to sell their house and they've been out, you know, calling Zillow all day long and they end up buying from something else. So um, uh, just little heart things to learn. Don't get your heart broken um, uh, by things that you can fix up front. So get your buyer agency signed, tell them how that works at the listing table. All right, are we good or am I overwhelming the crap out of you? 
Okay. Okay. Hey, Sabrina. All right. You know I'm on a roll, girl. I just got to keep going. Keep going. Okay. And Doing so, great. Good. And so Sabrina and I had this conversation last week, and she's, you know, was struggling a little bit about, gosh, you know, what's going on in my business. And I said, look, everything I'm closing this month, I did in December. I met these people in December. People called on my listing and I converted them in December and they're just now closing. Um, I called that expired last, like October, November, closing on him again. Um, I showed a house Christmas Eve and he's just now closing this month. You have to know that. You have to hang in there. Um, it snowballs over time, uh, but these daily activities will pay off. If you don't have a week with four new client appointments, you ain't gonna have any closings because you're not gonna have any clients. <laughs> so that's why these things are super important. So what are the activities to get these appointments? Like, how do I even do this? I don't, I mean, where do I even start? What do I do? Okay, I've got an answer for that. Um, you're going to either convert the leads that are coming in from those lead sources, um, and then you can follow our strict guideline that I created years ago because I felt like one, agents are not going to be consistent in their daily activities because we're not engineered that way. So when people try to put us in a time block situation, we're going to rebel and say that we time blocked and never do a darn thing. Um, so I created a point system. If you can fit in the productivity of 100 to 140 points per day, um, choosing different items that you want to do on a certain list, doesn't matter. You can change it up every single day. As long as you get 100 to 140 points and get those appointments, then um, you're going to have six-figure weeks. And uh, it's called My Six Figure Day. Write down uh, mysixfigureday.com. Pick up one of those sheets. It's free. Just download it. And uh, it gives you daily activities for you to do that are dollar productive. Because we get wrapped up in doing stuff and thinking we're working um, by, you know, scanning the MLS or going to an agent open house or, um, you know, previewing some places. No. Some of those things are important, but no, that is not dollar productive. If you're not doing something that's going to generate a, an appointment, then you're not getting paid. <laughs> so um, everything you do needs to do something that will cause someone to call you or you have a reason to call someone else. And my six figure day has things on it like take breakfast to businesses. Um, every time I do that, I'll walk away with leads. Um, the last time I did it, I walked away with um, a $300,000 referral and a um, $280,000 referral. Um, and, you know, I should be doing it every single day. So if you take breakfast to businesses, you can meet more people at one time. Uh, and get in front of them and be able to follow up with them and add them to your sphere of influence than you can by picking up the phone and asking for introductions or just asking people in the grocery store line. Just you wearing your name tag and asking this magic question 10 times a day, no matter where you go and you gotta go places. Um, and I know with COVID, it, it can be a challenge um, right now, but uh, we don't have that challenge so much right now where we are but wearing your name tag and asking the magic question. Hey, oh my gosh, I noticed you were sitting over there. I don't know, do you live nearby? I don't, the real estate market is crazy. I don't know if you've heard, but um, I have so many buyers right now and uh, I have got to find them a place to live. We have got a shortage. We've looked at everything in MLS. I mean, what three people do you know that need to sell a house in the next 60 days? And the reason that's the magic question is because when you ask in threes, um, then you're going to get at least an answer of one. You're not going to get the typical response of, gee, I don't know, but if you'll give me your business card, I'll pass it along. When you ask in threes, you're totally interrupting their thought pattern and it stops people in their track and they go, oh, wait a minute. You know, all I can think is somebody said they were buying. Oh, what's their sale number? right? Boo-hoo. 
And you only ask in one. There are lots of people that will teach you to say, um, do you know anybody who wants to invest by or sell? Well, then you've totally overwhelmed somebody and they're going to shut you down and go, no, nope, can't think of anybody. Everybody knows at least four to five people who want to make a move. Everybody. So we just have to ask the questions. Just if you got out and just asked those 10 questions every single day, then that alone will get you your appointments. Um, but again, I don't want to shortchange you. Let's ramp it up. Let's do some more productivity so that we are making sure you get those four new client appointments every single week. And uh, y'all, I've seen one of my agents who um, was a buyer agent and he transferred, you know, he said, I'm working, I can't work another minute. And he was closing, um, you know, around 60 uh, transactions and they were all buyers. And uh, I said, okay, we're going to do some direct mail. We're going to take over a town. He was like, I've never sold anything in that town. And I'm like, I don't care. Let's do this. And uh, he said, okay, let's do it. I watched him in one year. He transformed into the top listing agent of the city. He has, he would, he went as a challenge on seven listing appointments in one day one day. Okay. So I want you to know if somebody else can do it, you can do it too. And you probably can do it better. So um, you just have to get your mind set around all of this. Um, uh, when you download my six figure day and here, it, here it is. Um, I've got all of these things listed out for you. Um, focus on those things and they will make you money. Like Sabrina, she was like, okay, I'm on fire now. She had two closings this week and she's on the call as well using her as an example. And, uh, she said, that's it. I, I'm, I'm going to have a six figure day every stinking day. So she's been out knocking on for sale by owner doors. Guess what? She knocks on two doors and she knows the people already. She didn't even have to sell herself. The door comes open and she's like, I didn't know it was you who lived here. And, uh, these are just beautiful blessings and gifts that can happen to you too. And, uh, she's ha out there having conversations now. I've got property flyers over here that I'm going to take out today to local businesses and I'm going to take cookies with them. Yeah. Do we get tired that title people have done that in our offices for years, but they do it because it works. <laughs> And so it's going to work for you too. So all of those little things um, and Facebook lives are on there. Everybody can do a Facebook live. Here's one that's on there that I think you're going to really like um, because it makes you feel good and you can do it at 11 PM or you can do it at 5 AM in the morning, whatever your schedule is because other people are not going to be up and about. And that is giving reviews to, um, uh, 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 restaurants and small businesses in your community, do it on Facebook, then do it on Google, do it on LinkedIn, really give them great reviews because you want your name associated. You know, when you pull up Facebook, they'll show you all the reviews that you've given people. You know, when you pull up some people and they've given nothing but horrible, disgusting, nasty reviews because they feel like, thank God I have a social platform that I can be disgusting on. Well, you don't want to work with those people. Okay. So when you go out there and you give these positive reviews of places that are selling your community, you are an ambassador of your community. So you need to know the best restaurants. You need to know who to call that um, when uh, a person needs tires, you need to have all of these resources together. And then you need to be a supporter of all these resources. One of my agents in Tuscaloosa um, who sells 40 million a year, right? You would think she knows how to do everything and she is phenomenal she took this idea she put a facebook review on a builder's page of how fantastic their homes are she got a seven hundred thousand dollar listing that day not a week later not a month later that day so the things that i'm sharing with you i have tested 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 through all the agents that i've worked with and helped them transform and it's on my six figure day so are we rocking Okay, I'm not even stopping. I don't even know where we are on time. So the next thing that we want to have is your buyer presentation and your seller presentation. I interviewed over 200 home sellers when I created a designation called the Certified Home Marketing Expert. And uh, the reason I started that is um, uh, sellers started um, calling me all the time and they realized that I was a coach and I was an advocate for real estate agents. And they would call me to complain. <laughs> or Facebook message me. Can you tell agents to do this better? 
And I'm like, you know, instead of uh, me getting defensive, I'd say, let me hear more about that. Let me hear why you, we, why you feel that way. And then I would ask them, would you come in and do a video with me? And so that we could train the agents because a lot of times what we think a seller wants is the exact opposite. And uh, I was guilty of it too. I have poo pooed stuff about feedback. I'm like, you don't need it. They didn't make an offer. Move on. Don't worry about it. They will tear up and actually just get very emotional because they don't have the feedback. So I figured out, oh my gosh, we really need to address this issue. Um, and I now teach my agents to put feedback forms inside the house. And we haven't been doing that during COVID because we didn't want people touching papers or pens. But uh, the buyer itself can leave the actual feedback in the house so the seller can get immediately. And guess what? Turn the tables. I call the seller to say, what kind of feedback did we get today? <laughs> Instead of the seller calling me or every five minutes trying to find out and me having to call the agent 12 times for only them to hear it's like, oh yeah, that one. Yeah, it wasn't a fit because they don't remember which house they showed. <laughs> so um, one of the things I found out in these interviews um, is that sellers expect you to walk in their door um, or if you do it at a house, some, some people like to do it at an off-site location um, with a presentation. And the other thing that I found out is that even top producers go, oh, I don't use a presentation. I just have a conversation. And what happens is when you don't have a presentation, they automatically, they're still going to hire you. They've already lost a little bit of faith and trust in you from that moment because the expectation is that they want you to have a game plan. They want you to have a process that you've put together. They want you to have a presentation to show them that value. Plus, if you don't show a presentation, they're not going to know what it is that you do to help them get their property sold. They're just going to be like, and again, you could still win it because you're charismatic and they'll be like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh, wait, did, did you, why aren't you doing an open house? Are you not right? Because you didn't set all those expectations. Here's mine. Um, this is my seller presentation. It looks like a magazine and it's got all kinds of tips in it. And uh, I go over all this with them. It's got the process in there. It's got the four reasons that homes don't sell. Um, and guess what? They also requested. It's got a copy of everything that they'll put their signature on so that they can read through it if I don't get the listing at that table, because a lot of times we send electronic signatures later. Um, all sellers really want to leave behind and agents don't want to leave anything behind because they're like, Oh my God, if I don't get the listing, somebody's going to have my materials, right? Leave it, leave it because um, people, uh, if they copy you, it's flattery and you just get more creative and find a different value offering anyway. So don't worry about that piece. Make sure that you're making the seller happy. They want a leave behind so that they can remember the conversation, especially if they're interviewing people. Okay, so buyer presentation, seller presentation. Um, you can get these like merge them in no time in the EXP Marketing Center and EXP Enterprise. So um, you don't have to overthink it. Uh, uh, just make sure that um, you merge a really good looking photo with a good resolution because you want to always make sure that you have um, some professionalism. So how are we on time? I'm going to check it now. <laughs> We're rocking. All right. So now we're going to get down to um, being inescapable and what that means. So uh, for you to start out, people have to know that you're in the business. Okay. When people don't call you or refer you or um, uh, use you, um, it's because they don't understand and know or associate that you're in the business, especially if you have another job. If they don't see that you're doing things in real estate every single day, then they're going to say, well, you know, they have a, a job doing something else. We're going to go over here because we see them doing stuff every day. We either see their signs every day or we see activity. Every one of my clients, whenever they call me, They'll say, God, you are so busy. You have so much going on. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> but I make sure to uh, put that on social media every day. 
went, you know, met with two sellers to discuss their house today, um, uh, signed three contracts today, so excited and made an offer for these people today. It's not bragging, it's documenting your day and sharing what you're doing, okay? What if you're doing nothing <laughs> and you still need to make sure that um, you're sending that message out, then you want your photo in front of neighborhood signs and talk about who buy, like, uh, not who buys in there, but um, why people buy there. You want to talk about the value of the neighborhood because when people are scrolling through on social media and they see their neighborhood sign with your face, they're going to go, oh, wow. And right. And they're going to want to know more information about it. So you can go and get stock photos and use those every single, you can use them every week if you want and put a different tip or information about the house or talk about something that's sold or you know, how close it is to XYZ restaurants or the amenities. Um, so put something out every single day um, about real estate, even if you are not face to face with your uh, client. If you do, let's say you're scared to do a consultation. Okay. Because I want to, I like to stay in reality. Um, some, some of you are like, okay, she said I have to have a consultation, but I just, I just went and showed the house. Now what do I do? Right. Talk about how you just showed a house. Talk about the features that you've had that and post it and put it out there so that people know that you really are working because you're not, that people are going to be scared to refer you in your sphere of influence um, if they don't see you working. Um, my husband, he's a home builder. And uh, when people call him to ask him about subs, it, it actually makes him very nervous because he knows if he gives the wrong referral, they call him back to complain about it. And you have to think about that uh, trust factor that you're building. So being inescapable means uh, uh, being on social media, being in people's email boxes, um, uh, being in people's text messages, asking just kind words, just even asking the magic question, um, you know, uh, uh, and always, always bringing value. I want a home seller to say, oh my gosh, I have seen that girl's face everywhere. She is wearing me out. I guess I better call her. <laughs> that is um, how you can end up being an expert in your community, in your market. And with social media today, you can do it like that. Mary Martin Brown, who is on the call right on uh, the Zoom right now, she uh, just posted something about um, how much she loves living in, uh, and we, she and I live in the same city, a little bitty town um, outside of Birmingham, and she posted something on uh, uh, Facebook, I think, and put it on your story, right, Mary Martin Brown, yes, and yes. Uh, it was a video, and she got people reaching out to her, new clients. That's what I'm talking about. You've got to be inescapable, and um, she posted something on Instagram and sold a house from that. Um, so social media gives you the opportunity to be an expert as long as you are bringing value every single day. Now, you don't want to constantly go, hey, who needs to sell? Hey, who needs to buy? Hey, who needs to sell? Hey, who needs to buy? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about showing that um, you are out there actually working with people and people are choosing to work with you, right? So everybody else is like, oh, okay, I see, I see, right? And so they're buying into that and just seeing your value every single day. So inescapable is the word that I want you to write down and uh, uh, find a way in your style. Not everybody is flamboyant on social media and wants their face all over the place and um, is into videos. There are more people terrified of videos than public speaking. So, um, and I understand that. Find a way in your style to be inescapable because then you could take, like, let's see, I just put out postcards a couple weeks ago to certain neighborhoods. Now we're taking that exact same postcard and we created a Facebook ad with it. So there's continuity and we're targeting that same zip code so people are seeing it. Whenever um, uh, that postcard hit, I could put magnets on my card, right on my car and ride through the neighborhood. So they're pulling it out of the mailbox, seeing me drive by and go, Oh yeah. And then I'm going to follow them like crazy on Facebook stuff and do target one and target two ads so that they are in my world. Now they're in my, um, uh, on my website and they're getting automated messages and they're getting, um, value from emails that I send out. So you see how it works. It all has to come together in a big picture. 
um, uh, and for it to, to really turn into um, this business, uh, the six figure business that you want this foundation. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is every single time you have someone sign a buyer agency or um, sign a listing agreement, this is your opportunity to turn one transaction into three. Make it easier on yourself by asking um, for uh, the referral. And this is how you do it. You'll say, um, uh, Sabrina, you are just so awesome to work with. I am so excited that we are going to be able to go and find you that next house. I am just grateful. Now, some reason you got excited about looking for a house, either someone at work or a family member. Somebody's got you excited. I know it. So what three people do you know that also need to buy a house in the next 60 days? And then let her share who that is. I've, I've had people give me five names at one time. I've had people give me two. I've had people, you know, say, can't think of anybody. But when you ask that, and then you ask it again, make sure that client is always treated well first. It's never about you. It's always about your client. So after you get the contract signed and you're kind of celebrating with that, because that's another little high for them, um, uh, then you can say, I'm just so happy, Sabrina. We got this for you. Oh my God, girl, it is not over yet. We're going to have so many bumps in the road and it's going to be aggravating and you're going to be so frustrated. You'll be happy to be done with me by the time it's done. But I'm happy for you in this moment that we're getting you the house that you want. You know, you've been talking out to people, I'm sure, about the process that you've been going through and what we've been going going through together. Um, I know that you must have had lots of conversations with people about buying a house. You know, what three people have you talked to lately that also need to buy a house in the next 60 days? Okay, so that's when you ask the second time. And the third time is not at closing. Okay, don't make that closing about you. Sure, you can ask for a photo and stuff like that, but that closing is their celebration and not your chance to jump on them and ask for testimonials. You should have already asked for the testimonial up front, okay? I forget this because I get wrapped up in the conversation, but we do have a process where um, Erica, my assistant, will ask for that um, up front, and it's better to get it up front before the appraisal goes bad, before the um, home inspection issues happen, before people back out, because they're gonna associate all that negativity with you that you can't control. Um, so if you ask at closing, they might not even be talking to you at this point. And y'all, that's reality. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Things happen and come up beyond your control that um, will cause people to have issues. So when you ask for those um, referrals and testimonials up front, um, you're going to um, uh, have a better experience. Then, okay, after they move in, when you call to check on them, is the, a great time to ask the third time. And you can end up turning one transaction into three with that. And uh, for instance, I've got one that I closed on last month. And uh, they um, closing another one this Friday because she called and said, would you help my dad buy in the neighborhood? That's how it works. And if you don't ask for it, then they're going to think you're not interested in working for them or that you're too busy for them. So you have to ask. Um, and uh, uh, I think that um, uh, there was uh, uh, on We Are Built For This, um, that book that just came out about asking. Oh my God, go back and look at it. And John can probably give you better details about um, uh, that, but it was really good. I can't wait to read that book um, because asking um, and having the right to ask um, is uh, uh, differentiates a lot of the successful people. Um, and there's a way to ask it. Sometimes people can ask something and I'll be like, makes me feel very uncomfortable. So that's why I've given you the full scenario of like how I set things up because I want people to feel very comfortable in a trusting, warm nature and that it feel very natural and me not just go, hey, who you got? <laughs> so, all right. <clears throat> This is um, a huge issue, and uh, I wanted you to be able to, to, to see this slide. Zach put this in here for me because I think it really means a lot to him. And uh, when you get discouraged and you can't see that there is going to be that six-figure outcome 
on the other end, then a lot of people will quit. They'll give up. You cannot give up. You cannot let people beat you. Um, you cannot let the market beat you because I have seen greater incomes during the downturn in 08 and 09. And I saw creative things come out of that. And I, did I see people lose everything they had and agents having to turn their houses in and their cars in? I, yeah, I did see that. Um, and I don't want to see that for anyone else. But I also saw brand new agents making so much money in 08 and 09. Um, so people are always going to be buying houses no matter what. People are always going to be selling houses no matter what. People are going to be getting married and having babies and they need a place to live no matter what happens the economy. So no matter what happens in your business, don't give up. Just figure out what you did wrong. And, and probably in most cases, you didn't do anything wrong. You just haven't done enough of what you need to do to make those four new client appointments per week. Okay, the last thing I want to say is we get into habits sometimes. You know, we're praying and we just want these clients. And Sabrina knows this. I've complained. I'll wait to her. Um, and then when we get them, we complain the whole time about, you know, who they are, the decisions they're making, the anxiety that they're having. And sometimes it's just us venting, but don't vent to other clients. If you need to vent to another agent, that's totally fine. But always be grateful and thankful that they chose you. That old cliche is if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. Well, everybody gets their license because they think it's freaking easy and it's not. <laughs> it is a hard job. Um, a very hard job. You get, you work so many hours that you will never see a dime for. And uh, you just have to know that going into it up front. But be grateful that you've got the person who chose you and uh, is uncertain about their price and uncertain about, you know, your description and criticizing your photos. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what you wanted. You prayed for that <laughs> and you're getting it. So it's your job because we're actually in the people business, right? And making them happy. And uh, uh, the real estate side will end up working itself out. The last thing I want to say to you is go and learn your contracts inside and out because this will hurt you in the long run. If you don't know how to write a proper offer, use your mentor, burn them up. Um, last night I cooked dinner helping, uh, uh, you know, people <laughs> the whole time I was cooking dinner. I, I helped several contracts get written and several things get worked out and, uh, you have resources around you that will help you do that. Um, just make sure that you learn it so that you don't get into bad habits in five or 10 years down the road. You've been doing it wrong all this time because it could happen. So um, I hope that you have a fantastic day and that you've gotten a ton out of our time together. I told you I'm a meat and potatoes girl, even though I like to eat the dessert first. Um, <laughs> uh, get, go out and get your rewards. Follow my six-figure day and uh, hit that goal. Do what it takes, whatever it takes. There you go. All right. <laughs> to be a six-figure rookie. Thank you so much for letting me be here today. It's, uh, my name is Jenny Williams. It's G-E-N-N-Y Williams. Um, you can uh, like Get a Real Estate Life on Facebook, and uh, I'm always happy to answer any questions or help you any way that I can. Tony, thank you. Jenny, you've been wonderful. Thank you so very much. We really appreciate you sharing, and this was meat and potatoes all the way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, and uh, happy to give back anytime.